What's up guys, God's Leap back with another video. In this video we're finishing up our heroic Wrath of the Machine Ray tutorial with uh, you know the group makeup and everything else. Um, if you've watched my previous videos or you have done the normal mode then this should be a lot easier for you. If you've never done normal mode I would real quickly, uh, I've, I'll probably have it in the description or at the end of the video, um, my tutorial from the from normal mode. That way you can just add on the regular thing. But I'll try to explain it the best that I can. I don't want it to be so packed that it's it's difficult to make sense of. So this is the room that we had last time if you watched my Axis Part 1. Um, I'll explain what everything is. This right here is Axis's main location. This is where he starts off at. This is where he's going to be um, a, a good bit of times, but he's also going to move around some. So he'll be here, which is his main first place you see him. During the ads phase, he can also move here and here. And so if you're just, you know, if, if you see him move over here, call it out. That way the rest of your team knows where he's at and knows kind of where to hide so that he doesn't shoot them. Oh, excuse me. Now, let's get into the meetup. So let me explain what each thing is so you know what it is before I kind of give you the lowdown. So this is the main stage where he stands. This is down the stairs in the middle where the ads come out here and here. This is the back, and then this is left and right. These red squares are where the ads come out of. So if you're on the right over here, it's that far door down there on the end right here. And then in the middle, you got the left and right bottom where they come out. And then right, this is the far door. This is the closer door that's on the side. Uh, in the back back here, these little things are the four little lit up platforms in the back that are hanging out there kind of in the void that you can jump on for safety. I'll explain when you use those and what they're for. Uh, the blue things are for the Titan bubbles. I'll explain those shortly. Um, these purple squares or purple diamonds are where Axis will teleport during the damage phases. So here, 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 and here. I'll explain why, I'll explain why you use those. Um, and then these little green diamonds are where the captains and the servitors will spawn. So on the right side, they'll come out this door. In the middle, they'll come out of the bottom left door. And then on the left, they'll come out of this leftmost door. The blue circle is where the servitors, so the servitors will come out here, here, and here. This is the end points where the servitors will go before they uh, kind of disappear. I didn't have this on the axis part one. Up, well, actually, let me. Oh, I did. Oh, crap. I didn't explain it. Oh, hopefully it makes enough sense to you. But this is basically where they despawn at. Um, so let's get into it. So your team, in my opinion, you want two warlocks, two hunters, two titans. Uh, just as like the last video, both the warlocks in the middle because they're most likely to die there and they can revive. Titan and hunter over here, titan and hunter over here. If y'all get in a bind, back up and pop a bubble. If you get in a bind, back up and pop a bubble. It's just simple as that. Stay alive. That's the name of the game. If you need to use blessing, do it. Um, use five rounds to kill him if you have to as long as you can stay alive I would suggest bubble uh, uh, weapons bubble but you know that's neither here nor there if you can't stay alive um, also for the uh, weapons I'd have a high impact sniper a really good primary and dark drinker if you don't have dark drinker a really good rocket launcher um, really you only need three people with dark drinker because you've got three cannons during the damage phase but the dark drinker kills the captains very fast when they come out so here's what you're going to do. You're going to shoot a little plate on Axis' chest. This is going to start everything up. He's going to drop down and he's going to shoot at you a little bit. There's going to be ads that come out of all these red squares. Somewhere in each side, or no, there's going to be shanks that come out of each of these little red squares. When they come out, you're just going to kill them. Simple as that. Now, after you've killed enough of them, the captain's going to come out. Now, before that happens, this is where Axis will kind of move left and right, and you need to call it out because he'll be shooting at different angles and things like that, and you want to make sure you can take him out. After he moves, I think, twice, he'll teleport back to the middle. Once he teleports back to the middle, that is when the captains will finally come out. Uh, the, the green diamonds are where they come out. You want one of your guys, preferably the titans on these sides, and one of the warlocks in the middle. You'll go up and you'll kill the captain. However it is you deem, you know, you know, you think you should do it. I think the dark drinker is great, but if you don't have it, I can understand doing it a different way. Go kill the captain, pick up the cannon. Three people right before you do that are going to become empowered. What empowerment is, is when he finally starts teleporting to these spots, 
you have to slam the empowerment on him to, to I guess, kind of shock him um, to where you can put damage on him. Now, once you kill your captains, you want to assign one of the people in each of these three groups to be the cannon grabber, and then you want the other person to be the thrower. Now, some people like to do the whole thrower being the empowered person thing. I don't like that because it can confuse people. So I like to just have one person be the be the thrower the whole time and one person be the cannon grabber, whether you're um, empowered or not. Now, if your people are really good, they're good at changing positions up, and they can do it, go for it. But for most people, it's going to be com more confusing than it is anything else. So captains come out, kill all three captains. Your cannon grabbers go and grab the cannons. This is the big difference between this mode and normal mode. Instead of throwing three SIVA clusters at him, you have to throw seven. I'm pretty sure it's seven. It could be six, but I'm absolutely sure it's seven. So somebody's going to throw three times, so stay alive. You're going to have more than three servitors that come out. When you kill your captain, you're either going to get one cannon of void, arc, or solar. So like say if you get arc here, maybe you'll get solar here and void here. Once you get the cannon, a servitor is going to come out of each room and it's going to have a elemental damage on it. So, you know, void or null as it's called. Shock, arc, whichever one you want to call it, and then solar. Um, if you pick up an arc here, an arc servitor is not going to come out of this door. It's going to come out of one of the others. So, the rest of your team will call out where the servitors are. You'll go kill the servitor with your cannon. They'll, the person that's the thrower will go pick the little orb up and throw it at him. Now, when you finally, and I can't tell you how to do this because you kind of just have to watch his bar, you will know when there's only one left to throw at him before it's time for him to teleport. So after you kill all the, all the uh, servers you can and all the throwers throw their stuff, whoever has that last ball, hold on one minute. I know you want to throw it, but just hold on a second. Make sure all your empowered people are in the right position. Then once everybody, you got one on left, middle, and right, throw the last one. Now, when you throw the last one, he's going to teleport after that, and he's going to go to one of these diamonds. If he teleports here, then the right side's going to go get it. If he teleports here, then this person over here empowered on the left is going to go get it. If he teleports here, Either the left person or the right person is going to go get it. Now, I know that's a little different, but let me explain. I've had trouble in the past where the people that are right here in the middle, they'll grab it right here sometimes, but then sometimes they won't grab it back here. They'll be ready to jump down here. Don't know why this is, but it's the way it is. So here's the best thing to do. Right here where kind of this ledge is, in between middle and here, if you'll stand on the edge of that ledge, you will be in perfect placement to either get when he pops up here or here, and if you stand right here on the edge of the ledge, it'll be perfect placement to get here and here. That way, whoever's in the back is always responsible for this little spot right here. I've found that that works best for the teams, and it's been pretty successful. So you slam him the first time. So say he comes over here. You slam him, right? Three people are going to become empowered. It's not the same people as before. It could be, but it's random either way. So say you slam him here, and you get empowered again. Well, you don't need to be on this side no more. So what you'll do is you'll come right here, and you can get the middle. Right? So then if he comes on this side, whoever's empowered on the right is now responsible for the front middle. You still need somebody on the left, and you still need somebody in the back. This is where you need to coordinate. So he's teleported here, right? Well, he's going to teleport two more times. So say he goes left next. So he goes over here. Well, this left guy's going to run up and empower, slam him, right? Now... You need somebody covering middle, so whoever's empowered on the left over here, you'll grab middle on the front. Then you need someone for the back and the right side. Done. Now, third time, he comes back here. Person slams him on the back. This time, you get more time to damage him. So on this time, what you will do is everybody will come center, pop your Titan bubble, and then your three guys with the cannons are going to start shooting him. You're going to shoot your tethers. And the three guys, I guess the rest of them, whether they have Dark Drinker or whether they have a rocket launcher or a high sniper, you're just going to go at it. You're going to do all the damage you can. Just go for it. 
Now, if it's on the first time he's teleporting and he comes over here and you slam him and you're no longer empowered and you got a dark drinker, go at it. Go at his legs. Try to get as many of his legs as you can. If he teleports over here and you slam him and you're no longer empowered and other people are getting their stuff ready, you just jump down there and start going at his legs. Do the swing thing where it goes in a circle, not the, you know, just the slashes. You'll do more damage that way. If he comes back here and you slam on him and you're not empowered, start hacking away because that because if you've got the dark drinker and you're going at his legs and you're empowered and you're not ready, you won't have enough time to get to where you need to be. And then after you do it three times, he'll teleport back to here. He'll raise his hand up in the air and call some sort of nanite swarm thing. That's where these come into play. So a lot of people like to go for this one. So if you're looking in the room back out at these, this is going to be far left, but it's far right in the picture. This is normally where people go first. I don't know why they never go here, but this is mostly where people go. But you can kind of pick for yourself which side you want to start on. But everybody goes here and stands on it. As soon as the explosion happens, you jump off and you come back to it. Now, this is generally when people want to do their heavy ammo sense and things like that. So once you do that, you rinse and repeat for a couple of times. Uh, when you finally get his health down to like maybe 5%, something really low, he'll teleport back here with no shield. And he'll start doing that raise hand up in the air thing, explosion thing. That's when you got to kill him or you're going to die. And most people, if you plan it right, you can save about two or three of your scorch cannon shots and get him. Um, so that's 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 it. Um, hopefully this makes sense. Take a picture of it, share it with your group. Uh, let's see, anything I'm missing? Oh yeah, I forgot. Sorry. So what happens if? say this person becomes empowered and then these two become empowered right so you've got nobody over here on the right you can do this two ways now i've got my way that i want to start doing it with my group because i know we can do it and then you've got the other way that's easier for people who are not as coordinated and oh well i won't say they're not as coordinated but i just say they're not as aware of everybody's surroundings because this is mostly how it's going to be in a, in a random group with people that don't know each other and know what each other's positions are with my group i try to make sure we all know what we're doing like where we're at and what our job is um so for my group so say you've got a group of you and five other buddies you know what you're doing you've got a good solid team going and with our example we use this person gets empowered these two get empowered somebody in each set of two needs to be what I call the switcher. Now, the switchers need to be throwers. Okay, remember, switchers are throwers. That way, they're not running around with cannons or anything else. You know where they're going. All right, so these two are empowered. This was empowered. That means one of these people over here is going to have to move, and one of these people is going to have to move. Hunters are going to switch with each other. They're both throwers. That's it. So as soon as they call out empowerment, I'm talking about as soon as you hear empowerment, because you've got a minute to kill the captains. You ain't got to do it right away. As soon as you hear empowerment twice on the left, empowerment middle. You didn't hear anybody on the right. As soon as you know that that's happened, both hunters on right and left know they have to switch. Now you've got an empowered on the left, an empowered on, or empowered on the left, empowered on the right, empowered on the middle. Done. You're finished. Finished. And then just make sure you before you throw that last sea of a cluster at him that everybody's in their spot. That's as simple as I can make it, guys, for that for doing it that way. So say, all right, both people in the middle get picked, and then you got one over here that gets picked. That means that the hunter and the warlock that throws is going to have to switch. No brainer. It's like it's got to be an automatic thing in your brain. If you're the warlock that throws and you get empowered, and so does your other warlock buddy, and you hear, "Hey, we ain't got nobody on the left," the hunter and you are switching. Boom, done. If both people in the middle get empowered and somebody gets empowered on the left, and you hear, "We don't have nobody on the right," the thrower in the middle and the thrower on the right switch. Done every time. Bingo. And you've only got to do that for the first round before he when he first teleports. The other two, you just kind of have to make it up as you go because different people are going to get empowered and they're going to be in different spots. Um, and then you've got the other way, which is where, say, these two get empowered and this one gets empowered. And, you know, you hear over here on the right, hey, we don't have somebody. Well, both the hunters are still going to switch, but you're going to switch after you kill the captains and get the servitors, you know, going. Um, this is better for people who, you know, they can't do things as quick 
if you got a group and you're just not going as fast as, as some others, then this is the way you want to do it. It's not. I'm not saying you're not as good. I'm not saying that you're bad at the game. I'm just saying that's the best way to do it for that type of group. If you're with a group, you're quick, you can think on your feet real fast, you've got it, you're good to go, then I'd say do it with my way so you can go ahead and get all the switching out the way. You don't have to worry about none of it. But then again, it's totally up to you, whatever works best for your group. Now, I'm not going to go into the supercharging in this video. I might talk about it in another video. <sighs> nah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'll go ahead and do it. So, say he teleports over here the first time. Well, of course, whoever's empowered on this side is going to slam him. Well, over here at either this servitor despawn point or this servitor despawn point, a spire of SIVA-looking energy is going to pop up. If you've got a team that's pretty coordinated, they can slam these spots right before you slam him, and it will supercharge your team. It'll make you faster. It'll give you all your supers back. That way, if, you've, you, know, if you don't want to do tether and you want to do golden gun with uh, Nighthawk, go at it. Um, if you want to be on your warlock and throw endless grenades, go for it. If you can supercharge each time, you can do a crap ton of damage. I'm talking a lot of damage, man. It's insane. But that is the last resort. That's the last thing you want to add on to the group because it's the most confusing and the hardest part to add on to. But once you get a group together that's proficient, you all know what to do, you know where your spots are, it's definitely something to add in. Um, so say he teleports here on the front. One of the spires is going to be either here or here. And if these guys are coordinated enough, they see that the middle guys go and they're good, go slam. It's going to take away your empowerment and give it to someone else. So you're going to have to re-coordinate where everybody else is at. So that's it, guys. If you, I know this is a lot to take in, so if you've got any questions below, let me know, guys. I may have missed something. I don't think I have. I really don't. Um, I think I've told you everything that I need to tell you. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. But like I said, if you got a question, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'd love to answer. Um, if I missed anything and you know what I missed and you want to explain in the comments, go right ahead. I love it. Um, I, it's not easy getting all this stuff together sometimes, but this is the best way for me to learn it, and I hope it's helped. I hope it at least helps a bunch of you out. Um, but I hope you like it. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.